Is Jesus' First Love, Episode 73, Subject, Overcomer or Overcome? Overcomer or Overcome? Stephen was an overcomer. This brother was, Acts 6 and 8, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Overcomers were often executed, and Stephen was no exception. Acts 6 and 12, they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. Now we jump to Acts 7 and 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. Overcomers are richly rewarded. Jesus said, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. And I'm just thinking of Jesus when he suffered greatly, greatly. Um, and when he got to heaven, he was given the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus was definitely, most definitely, an overcomer. Overcomers will receive enormous rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Peter, let's talk about Peter, this precious brother in Christ, had his failures, see Galatians chapter 2. But he also was an overcomer. Jesus said to Peter and the other apostles, But you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom. Hmm. Just as my father bestowed, upon, bestowed one upon me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Wow. Overcomers suffer persecution. Paul to Timothy, all those who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Jesus to Peter, most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This Jesus spoke, signifying by what death he, Peter, would glorify God. Now, Paul, Paul was an overcomer. This precious brother has blessed not thousands and not millions, but perhaps billions throughout past centuries through his writings. This overcomer said in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him, Jesus, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection in the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. Paul suffered much persecution because he was an overcomer. Overcomers suffer persecution. You want to be an overcomer? Brace yourself. First chapter, First Corinthians chapter 11. This is Paul speaking of himself. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. 
From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. And he was well rewarded. Paul to Timothy, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. Now we talk about the overcome. Okay, the, the subject was overcomers, overcomer or overcome. Now we speak of the overcome, those who were overcome. The Ephesians were not overcomers. They were the overcome. Jesus said of them, I have this against you, that you have left first love. The Galatians were not were the overcome. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly, clearly portrayed among you as crucified? The Corinthians were not overcomers, but they were the overcome. You are still carnal, <laughs> Paul said to them, for where there are envy, strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? The saints in Sardis were overcome. Jesus, you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. They were the overcome. Okay, now segment number one of seven. Relationship relationship, relationship. The cost of being an overcomer in Christ is everything, repeat. The cost of being an overcomer in Christ is everything. Peter said to Jesus, we have left all to follow you. Paul also paid that high price of everything. Paul said, to live is Christ. Not to live is, in, is Christ and Paul, and not to live is Christ and Christians, and it's not to live is Christ and Christ plus, but to live is Christ, only Christ, his ways, his will, and his words. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. To imitate Paul, you must become an overcomer. You cannot be an overcomer unless you apply John 15, 5 to your Christianity. Jesus, John 15, 5, Jesus speaking, our precious teacher. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. In the center of that verse are these words. He who abides in me bears much fruit. Overcomers abide in Christ. <laughs> oh, you want to be an overcomer. For all, if, if you become an overcomer here in this short little time you have on planet Earth, you will be ever so grateful for that eternity of time that you spend in heaven. You want to be an overcomer. Ask Jesus for the grace, the power, the might, the understanding, the wisdom to be an overcomer. You want to be an overcomer. Two, segment two, the judgment seat of Christ. Those passing from planet earth to heaven as an evangelical will not be able to give a good account. Evangelicals 
don't do much. Actually, evangelicals can't do much. The reason they can't do much is because they're an evangelical. An evangelical is someone who has given themselves over to commandments of men, to a religion. A.W. Tozer, a quote from A.W. Tozer, Christianity is not costing us much at all. Every evangelical who claims to be born again and have eternal life forever is not doing as much to propagate his faith as the cults do. The cults give more, do more, sacrifice more, and put us to shame by their zeal and effort to make converts. Segment three, does Jesus hate evangelicalism? Evangelicalism consists entirely of overcome Christians. Evangelicalism consists entirely of overcome Christians. Disciples of Jesus Christ have been won over by this awful religion passing from, having passed from overcomer, the overcomer, to the overcome. Segment four, only stupid people go to hell, and I'm speaking to non-Christians. You are not an overcomer. You may have won trophies, gained a reputation, made oodles of money, but you have not overcome. Everyone on the quote unquote, the way that leads to destruction is a loser, even if your admirers think you are a winner. An overcomer ends up in heaven, not hell. An overcomer spends his or her eternity in the presence of Jesus, not in the presence of the father of lies, the devil. So, please hear this. One sincere, and I repeat, sincere, prayer unto Jesus will change, will change you from an overcome an overcome child of the devil to an overcomer in Christ. Would you think about that? Segment five, LarryJones.ca. Okay, here it goes. I am an overcomer. And no boasting in that. <laughs> I overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of my testimony, and I love not my life unto death. Overcomers, you see, are simply those who keep Jesus as first love, who stand guard over their relationship with King Jesus, who stand firmly against religionists intent on bringing us into their fold. Feeding on my library of books, articles, and videos just might entice you to let go of your religion and embrace more fully the very King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Okay, I'm not finished yet. I want you to hear the perspective of someone who is not attached to a religion. You see, religionists make their money by pleasing religionists. That might be those above them or their contemporaries. For example, a religionist invites a religionist to speak on his pulpit, okay? Religionist number one is invited by religionist number two to speak at their church. Religionist number one can't offend religionist number two because he will not be invited back again. So religionist number one is handicapped. You think, oh, well, they, you know, they're above that. No, they're not. No, they're not. 
to be to be an event an evangelical you have to leave first love to be an evangelical leader you have to be separated relationally speaking from Jesus more than those sitting in the congregation they are not above they may be more knowledgeable but they're not at, <laughs> but they're not above you okay so I say I am an overcomer well <clears throat> I am an overcomer but I can also be a bit of a jerk sometimes I have my faults I I fall into unbelief I can be impatient I can and I do lack gratitude and appreciation unto Jesus I can be easily distracted by the things of this world I don't watch television, but I watch stuff on YouTube that I shouldn't watch. I have a clumsy mouth. I say things that in an effort to be funny, but it's not funny at all. I, uh, mm, I've made so many mistakes. <clears throat> but nonetheless, I am an overcomer. Nonetheless, Jesus is my first love. And that's why I want you to read my material, because someone who has Jesus as first love allows the Lord Jesus, allows the Holy Spirit to flow through them. And I believe that my writing's far from perfect. It's Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit flowing through this surrendered vessel. That's why I want you to visit LarryJones.ca. Six, segment six, Let My People Go, my latest book. Let My People Go is directed to every evangelical officer every denominational person, every pastor, <clears throat> whoever. So why did I write that book? Because Jesus told me to. The Holy Spirit guided me through it. It wasn't me. I, it, that is to say, it's a very imperfect book because, because I'm such an imperfect vessel. But nobody has a right to do a podcast unless they're told by Jesus to do it. Nobody has a right to do a TV show. Nobody has a right to read, to write a book, in my opinion. If they don't do so by the direction of the Lord, then what gives them the right to do it? A.W. Tozer, whom I feature in Let My People Go, he was an overcomer. Oh, he was an overcomer, and he paid a price. Wayne Jacobson, whom I also feature in Let My People Go, is also an overcomer. Most of the teachings you have heard over the years, <clears throat> most of the teachings you have heard over the years were written or spoken by the overcome not the overcomers. It's true in my opinion. I'm going to repeat that. Most of the teachings you have heard, whether from your local church pulpit or on podcasts or TV shows or whatever, most of these teachings were written or spoken by those who had been overcome not by the overcomers. The overcomers would sound like Paul. The overcomers would sound more like Jesus. The overcome would sound like 
products of cultured Christianity, our Christianity, which is so different from New Testament Christianity. And these overcome teachers have harmed you greatly and perhaps caused you to become an overcomer, an overcome Christian. If you are an evangelical, you are an overcome Christian. In order to become an evangelical, you had to, to a degree, relationally speaking, drift away from Jesus. Hmm. Tozer and Jacobson would undo much of the damage if you simply sat at their feet, so to speak. If you simply gave them ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say through them. And now it's segment seven, which is prayer. I pray for you and you pray for me. May the Holy Spirit pray for you through me. And may the Holy Spirit pray through you for me. I think I got that right. Lift your hand to heaven. Lift your hand to Jesus if you want the effect of my prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you touch each person with a hand upraised to your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you were well pleased and in whom you are well pleased. Honor that person. Touch their souls. Touch their hearts. Touch their minds. Touch their physical bodies. I pray that, Father. I pray that, Father. Give me grace to receive by faith on their behalf. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. And now, Father, I pray for a physical touch upon each person with upraised hand. I pray, as I have before several times, Father, that you confirm the truth that I have spoken in, in episode 73. Lord, you confirm it with signs and wonders and miracle healings. I pray that. I pray, Father, that I would grow in faith. I would grow in faith as I continue to pray for others. I thank you, Father. I receive it by faith the best I can. In Jesus' name, in your name, Lord Jesus, amen. Now it's your turn to pray for me. Just a few seconds, okay? Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Catch you next time. Blessings.